Welcome back to the channel guys and thanks as always for joining us. On today's video we're going to be discussing type B RCCB protection on all your renewable installations. What is it? When do you need it? Why do you need it? And also we've teamed up with some friends to give you the best giveaway you've ever had. So stick around and find out more. Welcome back guys and thanks as always for joining us. Uh, as you know, I don't like to just pump out video after video after video. I like to put stuff together that I think is informative and useful for you guys. So today's topic is type B RCCBs or RCDs as they're more commonly known. Okay, some of you are getting involved with a lot of renewable technology stuff. So your PVs, uh, green solution installations and congratulations for, for getting involved in that absolute rampant market. A lot of you might not be aware, or some of you may be aware, but not quite completely au fait, that a lot of this technology needs a different level of protection, okay? Especially when put together on a single installation. Okay, so I'm gonna start this video very simply by talking you through what is a type BRCD, okay? Well, here's one I made earlier. So, what's a type BRCD? Well, this right here is a type BRCD. It looks very similar to a type A, one thing you'll notice though, it's an extra module wide, okay? So it takes up three spaces on your DIN rail. That's why it does fit on a standard DIN rail, just like any other RCD would do. Apart from that, it operates exactly the same as any Type A that you're already currently using. So that is what a Type B RCD looks like from Verso. So that's a Type B RCCB. Now obviously they're gonna vary in shape and size compared to uh, other manufacturers, okay? So other manufacturers may have a different variant of it, but as far as it comes as a Verso unit, that is our Type B RCD. Now, what does a Type B RCD do that a Type A can't? Well, really simply, you'll all remember the big change uh, to Amendment 2 with RCD selection. You could only use a Type A RCD from now on, if unless you can guarantee a circuit didn't have any DC trickle on it. Now, in a domestic installation, that is pretty much impossible. Okay, so it rendered a Type AC device fairly useless. You'll probably also remember the big campaign we ran, which was Say No to AC. And the reason for that, if you guys remember, is because DC can actually blind an AC device. So it just renders it useless. It can't work, can't trip. Okay, but a Type A device can work with up to 6 milliamp worth of pulsating DC trickle. Now, that's the key bit there, right? Pulsating DC trickle. Now, uh, anything above that, okay, or smooth DC, your type A RCD is now rendered blind. Now, we all know that blind doesn't mean visually blind. Blind means it cannot trip. So if it can't trip, it cannot protect the home or the circuit, again, renders it useless. And if it's on an RCD that is protecting a bank of sockets, not gonna work, bigger problem. So enter the type B RCCB. Right, so by now I know what you guys are all thinking. Well, thanks, great, type B RCD, what does that mean to me? Well, what a type B RCD does that obviously a type A can't is it can handle smooth DC current. Okay, so that's direct current and alternating current can be handled perfectly fine with any type B RCD device. How does that now affect you? Okay, well, I'm pretty confident that most of you, especially if you watched it to this point, are fitting EV chargers. Recognize this? So some EV chargers are actually fitted with an RDCDD. Okay, now not to confuse you with more acronyms, but what that actually means is they are capable with an integral device of handling DC current. And on those installations, using a type A RCD device to protect that circuit is absolutely fine, providing it doesn't go over six milliamp. Okay, now best, best to do is check with your EV charging manufacturer to find out if that's the case or get a data sheet, it may be on there as well. Obviously, each EV charger is different. Now, there are an awful lot of EV chargers that are not fitted with these types of device. Those that aren't fitted with this type of device aren't able to differentiate between DC and AC, and therefore, you would need to put a Type B device in to ensure the safety of that circuit and that it doesn't get 
blinded. So great, now we've established that we need a type B RCD on certain EV charges, okay? What about the rest of it? Why is there such a massive demand for type B at the moment where there hasn't been before? Well, you'll all have remembered or have been a part of um, all the news headlines and everything else of the big drive to renewables. People are putting EV chargers, heat pumps, solar PV inverters and battery storage on their houses wherever possible, not only to beat the energy crisis, but to become more efficient and energy conscious themselves. Some want a hybrid solution, some are trying to come off grid entirely. Everyone has their own reasons for doing it. So when, with these installations, you may have multiple different circuits that singularly do not exceed six million worth of DC. However, most do. And when bridging them together on one solution, you become the victim of harmonics, which actually takes that pulsating DC current and creates smooth DC current. Now, at this stage, a type A RCD device is blind. Blind, again, as I remind you guys, means that it cannot function in its proper way. So it cannot trip, okay? Like a saturated situation. So if you imagine a coil, imagine it's stuck full of chewing gum. The chewing gum is the DC. The coil can't now move. It's completely rendered useless. And this is what is happening to type A devices, even though they can protect against this level of DC. Once that becomes smooth, they cannot. Regardless of whether it's 6 milliamp or not, once it goes from a pulsating current into a smooth current, a type A DC device simply can't work. And there's an extra caveat too. So that caveat I just mentioned actually comes from the manufacturers of your renewable products. For example, your EV chargers, your heat pumps, your PV systems, your inverters, your battery storage guys. If you look at their installer manuals, speak to their technical team, most of them would suggest a type B solution. Now we all know what recommend now means in the regs. But here's an interesting one. Should something go wrong with your system and it not be installed to the recommendations, it can affect warranty situations on those products. So in that situation, you would be best to again fit a type B device just to be safe and sorry. If you're putting a 20, 30 grand system on someone's house, I'm pretty sure you don't want to carry the can on the technicality of a warranty situation that someone may or may not choose to exercise. So I hope you found our video on type B solutions for renewable installations really useful. And whilst we're at it, you might notice I'm wearing an absolutely lovely Gilet, of which is not in this week's giveaway because thanks to Alex and the guys at Unilight for donating all the stuff, this was included and it was also my size. So thank you very much. This will be staying here. But all of this stuff and this stuff and this stuff is up for grabs on this week's competition. So, very simply, as you guys know, the rules by now, make sure you like this video, make sure you subscribe to the channel, then head over to our Instagram, which is at verso underscore electrical, and answer this really simple question. How many milliamps of pulsating DC can a type A device handle before having to be upgraded to a type B RCD. Very simply guys, just send us that uh, message on our Instagram. Please give us your, leave your thoughts in, in the comments and if there's any other topics you'd like to hear us do, um, we try and get back to absolutely everyone. Again, the, our Instagram is at uh, verso underscore electrical. Mine is at william.winter1 if you'd ever want any comments or feedback or just have any questions in general. Until next time guys, thank you very much and take care.